Say Chrysalis, Tyrek, and Cozy Glow got released from stone, not by someone evil, but by someone who wanted to see them reformed, just like with Discord. Is there still hope for these three? And if so, how would you go about reforming them? I may just have the answer. Two videos ago was about whether the villain should be freed from stone. If you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and watch it after this video. But realistically, if you could successfully free those three, how would you keep them from just going back to the same old ways? If only we had a detailed guide of some Oh wait, I do. First, you gotta keep them apart. We've seen how powerful they are together. At first, I was hoping that would play in our favor. Working as a team might help them realize the magic of friendship. And while they did come pretty darn close, something was still blocking that. They were blocking each other. If if they remained a team after being released, they would most likely just pull each other back down into evil, and we know they do a great job at evil. That's why it'll be much safer to keep them isolated from each other and focus on reforming them one at a time. Now, to keep each villain from trying anything, Discord should be there, ready to turn them back to stone at a moment's notice. Side note, the Royal Sisters wouldn't need to be there. If you watch closely, all they did was destroy the cupcake. The actual magic that turned them to stone was the lightning, which only came from Discord. Anyway, back when Discord was the one being reformed, having the elements of harmony trained on him certainly kept him in check, but you gotta give them freedom at some point. Continue the story, and Discord didn't budge from his stubbornness until Fluttershy promised not to use her element on him, and Tyranny was within his grasp. It was only when Fluttershy made him choose between Tyranny and friendship that he realized he valued friendship more. But just because Fluttershy's gamble worked doesn't mean we should take our chances here. When the time comes, each villain can be tested, made to think they have the choice between friendship and Tyranny, but should they try to choose Tyranny, there's no real threat. I think that that's the best way to safely bring these three back. Now, keeping them from being a threat is one thing. Effectively showing them the value of friendship is an entirely different matter. We need to get them to the point where they can pass the test, which may not be as hard as it sounds. Like I said, after working together, they came so close to getting it, but for one reason or another, it didn't stick. So let's explore those reasons. Each villain has their own motivations, their own blocks that keep them from embracing friendship. So we're gonna need a different approach for each one. Today, I'm tackling Chrysalis. I'll tackle Cozy and Tyrek another day. In that one moment, when the three were on the verge of understanding the magic of friendship, Chrysalis was the first to back out. She panicked, claiming, quote, the magic of friendship is like a disease, an infection that spreads to those around you. I watched it infect my hive. I will not let it get me. This is what's holding her back. She saw the changes happening to the hive, fierce soldiers becoming docile weaklings and wanted nothing to do with it. The thing is, she may have a point. You could argue that Thorax threw the baby out with the bathwater. Instead of reforming changeling culture, he seemed to abolish it in favor of mimicking pony culture. That's a legitimate thing to be upset over, so I can understand where Chrysalis is coming from here. But her woes aren't truly with friendship, are they? They're with Thorax's leadership. The dragons embraced friendship and stayed just as rough and tumble as ever. Meanwhile, the changelings aren't even recognizable. It's almost as if they're trying to be ponies, down to imitating their traditions. I think Chrysalis may may be conflating this sort of pony colonialism with friendship. What we need to do is disconnect those ideas in her mind. Yes, it's a shame that changelings lost so much of their identity, but it wasn't because of friendship. It was because they needed a strong link to their culture, a link that Thorax just couldn't provide. Friendship isn't the problem, and it's all about making her see that. So how do we do it? Well, you could point to the dragons, but if we really want to convince Chrysalis, there's a much better example closer to home. Pharynx. I think Pharynx is the key to reforming Queen Chrysalis. He was of the last to embrace friendship, afraid that he'd lose a part of himself. But the only thing he lost was his hunger. He is living proof that friendship can be fierce and that the best parts of old changeling life can live on. The magic of friendship can look like soft, cuddly ponies, but it can also look like a soldier defending the safety of those they love. I can imagine a scenario where Chrysalis tries to take the hive back by force, expecting them to cower in their frailty and surrender. But instead, she's met with Pharynx, putting up one heck of a fight. She's exposed to the reality that you can embrace friendship without abandoning your identity. No one exemplifies this better than the friendly but fierce Pharynx. Chrysalis would finally understand that it's not truly friendship she's against. It's all of the changelings losing touch with their culture. Pharynx might agree, telling her that the Hive needs a figure to bridge their past to their present, a role only she can fill. The Hive still has a place for her. That moment of feeling needed and appreciated is what convinced Pharynx, so the same may work for Chrysalis. She could finally reform. 
From there, she could live at the Hive, connecting changelings to their history and tradition, bringing back the best of what used to be while leaving the worst behind, giving changelings their own sense of culture instead of misunderstood pony traditions. Once she can be trusted with authority, maybe she could even rule alongside Thorax, or at least be an official advisor. He could stand to learn a lot from her. Regardless, the future of Queen Chrysalis can still look bright. I'm holding out hope that Twilight will take after her mentor and free the villains under controlled circumstances. But what do you guys think? Is there a better way to go about freeing the villains and reforming Chrysalis? Leave your thoughts in the comments, and if you want to support this channel financially, check out my reward tiers at patreon.com slash sawtoothwaves. And thank you so much to everyone who already has, especially my Alicorn tier patrons. Platon, Sarah Star, Oceana Love, Ghastly Spark, Maximilian HG, Cyanax, Skunk Bunk, Houndflash, DH, Mungo Jerry, Dr. Hooves, The Nameless One, Paco Taco, Darth Silar 12, Cameo Shadowness, Yoshi Dark Lord, Fair Fallen, Namink, and Equinox 3141. You help make this channel possible. I'm Sawtooth Wave, signing out until Friday after next. Brohu!